कर दू ना आपको आवाज सही आ रही ठीक 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 है ठीक है हम शुरू कर दे Assalamu alaikum everyone and again i am here now talking to you uh today the topic is that which has turned everyone upside down it has changed the whole paradigm of uh, everything that's why i am on this side of computer talking to you and not in the class uh, face to face which i like the best but but we are continuing something uh, that's the best part of it so today's topic is corona virus we will focus on the structure on the structure pathogenesis uh, and briefly treatment and different type of uh, vaccination that is available for this deadly disease so it all started here in china the epicenter of this pandemic was china you can see here this is china and in uh, hubei province of china wuhan city this disease started in the probably in the wet market and then rapidly engulfed the entire world and by the end of march there were so many countries that were involved and we will see how this disease uh, took its course so before uh going into the details of the structure of this virus i would like to mention dr lee v lang an ophthalmologist by profession an eye specialist uh, he was the whistle blower for this disease and reported to the authorities that some atypical type of pneumonia is uh, spreading very uh, rapidly but at that time no one was ready to accept it and uh, uh, while treating the patients he got corona virus and he died at the age of young age of 33 he died because of corona so one must remember the person who uh, reported this virus. and now you can see this was the figure which was there in our ncoc uh, website for international uh, the patients all over the world that are there and the deaths you can see the number and it is still counting it's still going on so much people are getting involved Uh, because we are not pro taking proper care of precaution we are not taking so the number is still counting so this is the number of yesterday's night 841606 confirmed cases in pakistan and 84000 and uh, 480 are uh, active cases and this is the split of uh, different patients which are there in different provinces of pakistan so uh, talking about corona virus actually these are a large family of common viruses and they usually cause uh, common cold in humans and animals and the, this virus is involved this virus is in uh, responsible for a quarter of cases like quarter of the cases of common cold uh, due to this corona virus and it is the second to rhinovirus first on number 1 is rhinovirus and after that 
virus. But the specificity about this virus is that it is present in humans as well as in animals. Both, both have this uh, virus. Okay. And many cases of common cold are due to coronavirus. So what is the disease called and what is the name of the virus? We should be clear about that. So COVID-19 or coronavirus disease 19 is the disease, while severe acute respiratory syndrome COVID-2 is the name of the virus. Severe acute respiratory syndrome COVID-2. And why we are calling SARS or SARS-CoV-2? Because a similar disease was uh, uh, erupted in 2002 and it also started from China and then took a, a picture of pandemic. So there are seven known corona. There are many corona, but uh, uh, seven are important, seven known coronaviruses. And uh, from them, SARS, to, it caused the pandemic in 2002, and it comes in like outbreaks and pandemics every 10 years. After a decade, they come and uh, cause, uh, involve uh, multiple countries and many people in, around the world and cause this disease. So in 2002, SARS was first reported from China and then Singapore and then involved the surrounding countries. And then MERS, Middle Eastern Respiratory Virus, uh, it was reported in 2012, after 10 years, after a decade, and now we haven't completed it a decade and we are under the spell of this SARS-CoV-2 2019. And we are calling it 2019 or 19 because it was first reported in the December of 2019. So about the shape and uh, why it is called Corona, because uh, you see, uh, it has got spikes all around its surface, which are very important in causing the disease and have got a specificity for certain receptors. Uh, so they, it has got a spike protein. And due to these spikes, it gives a crown shape to the virus. And crown is... Latin word, uh, Latin word for crown is corona. Corona also means hello. And in Spanish, the floral wreath, which is kept on um, uh, like uh, caskets is also known as corona. So it's a non-segmented single stranded positive polarity RNA genome, it's envelope and it has got a helical nucleocapsid. Coronavirus is known to evolve within animals. What happens, the center of the disease is usually a bat. From the bat, it is accidentally ga gains entry into some intermediate hosts. In SARS, that is, which erupted in 2002, the intermediate hosts were uh, palm civets, which is uh, a cat-like animal, and raccoon dogs. The intermediate hosts were like raccoon dogs. This is a raccoon. This is the picture which you are uh, uh, watching just now is raccoon dog. And in MERS or Middle Eastern uh, Respiratory Virus, the intermediate host was camel. Okay, and now for COVID-19, the intermediate host is pangolin. Pangolin is a small animal having scales on the body. And it is thought that the scaly skin has got a healing uh, property. So it is illegally transported uh, all over the world and is a reason maybe 
to spread the disease so quickly because of this pangolin. What happens that uh, these bats, uh, they want to keep themselves cool. So how they are keeping themselves cool? By, their, by splattering the saliva, they, they splatter the saliva on their wings and then they cool themselves. So when they are flying, the saliva gets uh, spread to other animals. Uh, these accidental animals can be the coon dog or a camel or a pangolin. And in that pangolin or a raccoon dog or camel, the virus is there for quite some time until they come into contact with human beings and the virus is transmitted to them. So here, whatever I have explained it, that this disease has got a primary host, a secondary host, and a tertiary host. Primary host or natural um, reservoir of infection is bat. These bats can be of different varieties, can be uh, like a Egyptian tomb bat, or it can be horseshoe bat, uh, different types of species of uh, bats are involved that carry coronaviruses. Then these transmit the disease to uh, civet cat or palm cat, and the, or uh, camel and or pangolin, and then this virus is transmitted to human being. So in SARS, the outbreak occurred in 2002 in China. Um, possible natural hosts were horseshoe bat, and intermediate hosts were masked palm civets, like this. And total cases were 8,422, and deaths were 90, uh, 916, and total fatality rate was 10.9. So how do we know the, uh, or how do we come to know that this is the fatality rate? So fatality rate is the, uh, uh, total deaths, upon the total number of affected cases into 100, and then you get the total, total fatality rate, okay? And uh, sometimes it is also explained as uh, R0. R0 is the measure through which we know that how infectious some disease is. So it was found with we have covered this and I have shown you the pangolin because some of you may not be accustomed with this kind of animal. Okay, so coming towards the structure, what is, what is some special thing about it? this structure and how it gains entry into our body? There are series of protein spikes on its surface, uh, which appear as a crown and they are known as spike protein or S, and then M or membrane protein, they are abundant in uh, amount, and then N or nucleoprotein, E is for envelope protein. So S, M, N, and E, you have to remember, okay? S is for spike, responsible for allowing the virus to attach to the membrane of the host cell. The thing is that why it's causing some specific symptoms in the lung or respiratory system. So the, the explanation for that is that this virus has got special affinity to ACE2 receptor or angiotensin converting enzyme type 2. The, these receptors are present on the epithelial lining of the lung. And this virus, when it gains entry through the trachea, through the bronchi, terminal bronchi and alveoli, it goes to the, this uh, re respiratory epithelium, finds this ACE2 receptor, which has got a special lock on it. And this is spike acts as a key to this lock 
gains the entry. It's not so simple or a straightforward mechanism. There are certain host protein, which are also there and which are also helping in the fusion and pathogenesis of the disease. But just to explain it to you that these ACE receptors are present in the respiratory epithelium and these spike proteins, they join or fuse with that, fuse with the ACE receptor, gain entry to the respiratory epithelium, decoat or uh, they remove the coat or outer layer from themselves and the RNA gains entry and then the cellular machinery is taken up by the virus, okay? So to explain it more, you can see these are the, these uh, spike type uh, proteins which are present there, spike protein or S protein and then E or envelope protein. And here these small blue color uh, rods, which you can see is a membrane protein and inside it is RNA, okay? So the function of the membrane protein is a central organizer of COV assembly or COVID uh, coronavirus assembly and determines the shape of the viral envelope and E protein interacts with M to form a viral envelope. And spike protein is critical for binding the host cell to facilitate the entry of the host cell. And nucleoprotein is inside. And you know that when it gains entry and control the cellular mechanism, then uh, it stimulates cell or directs the cell to make more copies, transcribe, translate, and make more copies of themselves until the cell is full of viral particles. So uh, can you tell me how does this virus gains entry into the host cell? Please chat me Jawab DJ. Isn't bad the intermediate host for COVID-19? It was postulated respiratory droplets. A bit or zara specific hoke, ye to pata yoga na, harek ko pata hai, ye to sari dunya ko pata chal gaya ke respiratory droplets se hota hai. Main ye keh rahe hu ke jab ek dafa ko COVID-19 andar pohunch gaya, to wo cell ke andar kaise jata hai? Ye pooch rahe transmission nahi pooch rahi hu ye pooch rahi hu ke after it has joined with the ace2 receptor how what is the mode of entry of the virus into the cell okay theek hai beta theek hai ab dobara aate hain iske paas question ke paas So though there are two methods by direct entry, by binding to the receptor and by endocytosis. Taking the membrane of the cell along with it form a vacuole type thing and gains entry into the cell. And here they bind with the ACE receptor uh, by their parts S1 and S2. S1 has got a receptor binding domain or RBD and uh, it has got a S2, which fuses the viral cell membrane to the host cell membrane. And then this RNA is injected inside the cell. So this, this I was asking. Okay, ACE2 receptors are present. Where these receptors are present? They are present in lung, heart, kidney, and intestine. COV2 has got 20% more affinity than SARS-1. And that's maybe this is, this is the reason why this infection is spreading so quickly, okay? And spike has two subunits. I have already told you S1 and S2. S1 is a floral type of thing. Like, like a flora. 
जैसे कली होती है कोई भी फ्लावर की इज जस्ट लाइक दैट एस वन इज जस्ट लाइक दैट इट हैज गॉट आर बी जी आर बी डी क्या मैंने आपको बताया आरबीडी क्या है प्लीज चैट पे जवाब दीजिए आरबीडी क्या होती यस वेरी गुड इनका नाम नहीं आ रहा मुझे पता नहीं है रिसेप्टर बाइंडिंग प्रोटीन आरबीडी इज रिसेप्टर बाइंडिंग वेरी गुड तो दिस इज रिसेप्टर बाइंडिंग इट गेन्स it gets attached to ace receptor and the s2 is here somewhere here this is this is s2 this is s1 and this is s2 s2 helps the viral cell to fuse with the uh, host cell membrane okay and by knowing s1 s2 and everything the clinician were able to treat the disease in a best possible way and to design vaccines for the treatment of this disease okay so again maine jo teddy medicine tasveer banayi wo kuch is tarah se hai rbd or receptor binding domain it's get fused with ace2 receptor and this is human cell this part is human cell this is virus and this we are uh, watching under like more resolution and more power then you can see it has got s2 here somewhere in the top of this spike and this is the chloro pattern and another thing which i want to explain uh, in the start or in the beginning when this uh, infection was spreading this uh petals were somewhat closed uh, but now which variants which we are de detecting they are more open so when it is more open it is more dangerous and more infective but i don't have the proper description for that but uh, some virologists were telling uh, that now they are more open and more dangerous and in the beginning these uh, rbds were like closed flower okay. so why it is important to wash your hands with soap sara din tv pe chalta hai phone pe message aata hai sab kuch bar bar ye bol dete hain wash your hands wash your hands why why they are saying like that please chat pe jawab dijiye जागे नहीं है अभी तक पूरी तरह ओके okay. कोई कोई लोग जागे हुए हैं और उन्होंने जवाब दिया है कि ये बिकॉज दिस वायरस हैज गॉड एनवल विच इज ड्राइव फ्रॉम अवर सेल्यूलर मेम्ब्रेन एंड विच इज लिपिड इन नेचर this lipid layer will be disintegrated when you will wash your hands repeatedly so when you wash your hands if you have come into contact god forbid with this virus then you will wash it okay this layer will be disintegrated and the virus won't be able to survive it will die that's why they are saying please wash your hands for 20 seconds so membrane protein most abundant on the viral surface define the shape of the virus central organizer of virus assembly and interacts with other structural proteins e protein is smallest of all major viral proteins okay and it causes assembly and release of the virus m and e protein are critical in turning the host cell into workshops they turn the, our ho, our cells into factories or workshop where viral and host cell make new viral particles viral envelope is derived from the host cell membrane and it is a fatty layer 
Nucleic capsid is a genetic shell of the uh, virus below the envelope, and nuclear protein is single stranded RNA. Just think of a necklace which is made up of uh, beads. Okay, so the thread in that necklace is RNA, and the nucleocapsid is the uh, are the beads which are there. Okay, just to simplify and have an idea what they are, I was giving this example. So here I have shown you like this more uh, to explain it more. You can see this is a necklace with the beads. So this thread, it is RNA and this uh, bead area is the capsid. And here in a more uh, like a pretty way, you can see the beads, these are the capsid and RNA inside them is the thread. Replication, virus adsorbs to cell via surface spikes, enters the cytoplasm where it is uncoated. The positive strand is translated into two large polypeptides. They are self-cleaved by virus encoded proteas. Two of these polypeptides aggregate to form RNA polymerase that replicates the genome. The messenger RNA is synthesized and is translated to structural proteins. Virus assembles and obtains its envelope from the endoplasmic reticle. So please understand that cell has many things, but we are focusing on two, three things here endoplasmic reticulum and the Golgi apparatus and the ribosome. They are crucial in the replication of coronavirus. Here you can see the virus, it gains entry by binding with the ACE2 receptor or angiotensin converting enzyme to re receptor. It is binding along with many chemic supportive chemical agents and this is happening, okay? So, and then when it enters, it gets rid of the co this coat and this uh, RNA, it is read by the ribosomes and there is translation and RNA replication, okay? And along with this thing, big polyproteins are also made, these proteins are further degraded into different virus particles. They all aggregate here in the endoplasmic reticulum. Then all of these things, they are sent to Golgi apparatus and here they are nicely packaged and it takes up the membrane, host cell membrane and then exo exocytosed, okay? So that's the process that's going on in the replication of this virus. So this is the same thing which we have uh, elaborated and you can see there's genomic RNA and ribosomes and here is the endoplasmic reticulum and viral dependent RNA polymerase. It synthesizes more RNA this is happening as if that this virus, when it enters, takes up the machinery and shut down the normal mechanisms that are going on inside the cell and cell to make what this virus is saying. That means making more copies of it and then package them in the Golgi apparatus. So this we will see in a short video because it's a very complicated process. I want to show you some uh, small one minute video so that you can better understand this.
so virus is coming into contact with ASP proteins okay, along with other helpers. They cut the spike protein and cause fusion. Coating is cut off and this, this RNA gains entry to the cell. Okay. It goes into side, inside the ribosomes and viral protein is made. And this along with the viral proteins, other structural proteins are also made. They go into the Golgi apparatus all the other structural proteins also go there in the uh, Golgi apparatus, take up the whole cell membrane and they are exocytosed until all the cell is full of viruses. And then the body asks the cell to destroy itself or apoptosis occurs. See how it is spreading and infecting new cells. It was the simple, simplest way to explain it. Again, to our sub lecture again, this is the link of the video. So if you want to see, watch it again, you can take a, a screenshot of it and then watch at your own convenience. Okay. So where does the replication of the virus occur? Please, chat with Jawab DJ. Beta, I uh, link share kiya hua hai YouTube ka. You can watch it uh, at your own time. Say it. Uh, I'm sorry, kuch aapke uh, jo colleagues hain, wo dek nahi paaya video. Okay. Mene sawal puchha tha ke replication kaha hoti hai. Please, phir se soche. Or jawab dije. On your chat. I'm watching in the whole cell, whole cell machinery. Okay. Using the host shell ribosome and Golgi in the cytosol. Kuch ne ka matlab tha ke cell me cytoplasm me replication hoti hai ya nucleus me hoti hai. Ye batai. Just tell me. Cytoplasm. Why cytoplasm? Somebody is answering. Zulf Azam, Miss Azam, who is because ribosomes are there. Very good. So the replication of corona is taking place in the cytoplasm of the cell. Okay. Transmission. It is transmitted through respiratory aerosol, through speaking, sneezing, and coughing. And it has got as it is. It has been declared pandemic. It has got a worldwide distribution. Everyone is involved. Every country is involved. SARS virus started in China 2002 and 8,300 cases were reported. 785 deaths were there. So it had a fatality rate of 9%. Okay. In 2012, a new human coronavirus caused an outbreak, serious and fatal pneumonia in Saudi Arabia and other countries in the region, Middle Eastern or MERS. And here the fatality rate, uh, mortality rate or fatality rate was 35%. There were 1,879 cases and 35% uh, fatality rate. Pathogenesis, 
Infection is in the mucosal cell of respiratory epithelium. 50% of the cases are asymptomatic. Pneumonia causes, caused by SARS is characterized by diffuse edema resulting in hypoxia. So here I want to tell you that mostly this is asymptomatic. Young people uh, which uh, accidentally get this infection, they recover quickly and they don't show any obvious uh, sign and symptom of the disease. While the people who are even more, they are of more age, like 60 and above, or having comorbidities along with it, as it is common as you, as the age advances, the other diseases also come into play, like hypertension, like uh, asthma or smoking or anything else, uh, which is compromising your lung function or diabetes, if uh, this person is having, then the chances of uh, getting the disease and getting uh, like in a worse form when these comorbid conditions are present. While in younger people, the symptoms are uh, less significant. Uh, and why this, this is happening? What happened that when there is inflammation, so the inflammatory part in the lung, it, it gives the sing signals to the body that, hello, I'm in problem. So please send some help. So what happens that neutrophils, macrophages, they come into play and uh, the, the, the capillaries around the alveoli, uh, they become leaky. So there is fluid accumulation and these neutrophil and macrophage, they release different cytokines. There is uh, interleukin-1, interleukin-6, interleukin-8, and tumor necrosis factor alpha. All of these cytokines, they worsen the condition. And sometimes the condition is uh, so like aggravated it leads to a cytokine a storm. It, it gives the body harm rather than uh, benefiting it. So this uh, cytokine storm is also observed in corona patient in uh, some of the patients it happens. So this uh, binding of uh, ACE2 receptor caused uh, dysregulation of fluid balance that causes edema in the alveolar spaces. Inflammatory exudate edema around the alveoli compromises the uh, oxygen perfusion of the lung. And that's why this uh, person is developing hypoxia or hypoxemia, okay? So what will be the... Uh, clinical features in such a case, there will be features just like when the disease is mild, it will be just like a, a common cold or flu. There will be a runny rose, scratchy throat and fever. But as uh, this uh, uh, sometimes in when the age is like uh, the person is of more age, uh, and it has got certain comorbid conditions also, then the disease is in its uh, moderate or severe form. There's fever with chills. Uh, sometimes there's loss of smell and taste also in this disease. And uh, there is uh, the oxygen perfusion of that patient, it decreases below 90%. So it should ring the bell and we should take that person into hospital because then uh, the support is cannot be given at home. While in uh, like uh, mild cases or young persons, when the oxygen saturation is not that much compromised, we can keep that patient at home and uh, quarantine or iso isolate that patient. So what are the diagnostic tools that we can use uh, in uh, cases where the corona is uh, suspected? First of all, RT-PCR is the like gold standard, which, which can be done and we can uh, 
see whether the patient is positive or not. And after that, if the uh, is worsening or to see the prognosis of the uh, in that particular patient, we'll go for a chest X-ray or we'll uh, do the CT chest and uh, then other blood tests are also done uh, to see the leukopenia or lymphocytopenia or thrombocytopenia. All of these conditions, decreased level in the WBC or uh, platelets is seen. Uh, and uh, if the patient is rec recovering from the disease, uh, by doing the antibodies, we can see the condition of that patient. So on X-ray chest, you will see bilateral basal uh, white markings uh, in the chest X-ray, which are shown here also, or ground glass opacities is bilateral uh, basal uh, ground glass appearance are due to the infection, inflammation, and if it is seen after a while or three, four, five weeks, then it will be replaced by fibrosis. So these white lines are due to the fibrosed lung. And this is uh, the CT, which, uh, which will be showing us the uh, this uh, ground glass opacities along with it, the crazy pav pavement pattern. You see in the garden, we place different types of uh, stones for, for walking in the middle of the garden. We pave that uh, place for walking. So that is shown here in the uh, lung. We can see the crazy pavement pattern, which is characteristic of coronavirus infection. Treatment will depend upon the severity of the symptom, age of the patient, uh, and uh, what are the comorbid conditions that are there, that means hypertension, blood pressure, any lung condition which is present, and we will check the uh, PO2 by pulse oximeter before going to the hospital and after that, uh, they can uh, see on the monitors. So how can we prevent this, uh, such a condition? Everybody knows, but I'm repeating the facts that wash, we have to wash our hands, we have to use mask, and we have to avoid our T-zone. What is a T-zone? T-zone, uh, eyes, nose, and mouth is a T-zone. So when we are touching something, and then we have to sanitize it to avoid spreading the infection and getting the infection. Staying at home, and of course, we cannot shake hands, sanitize frequently. We have to keep distance. So these are the preventive measures that can be taken. Now coming towards the vaccination, what are the vaccinations that are available for this disease? And uh, what are the vaccinations that are used in Pakistan? So the most, there are so many that are in the market and you can see on the net that there are so many vaccines that are available. Uh, one of them is from, the country where they are made is shown by a flag here. So uh, by United Kingdom or UK has uh, made this Oxford or AstraZeneca vaccine. Uh, it is using viral vector or genetically modified virus. And it comes in uh, two doses. And uh, how effective it is, it is 62 to 90% effective. And its cost is three to four dollars. While the Moderna, and Pfizer, they are made in America. And uh, this is uh, made with the help of some other country also. Uh, they are using RNA or part of the virus. And they are 95% effective, okay? And their cost is 25 to $15. And then is the Sputnik, which is made in Russia or Soviet Union, uh, the previously known as Soviet Union, they are using the viral vector. It, it is available in two doses. 
uh, and it is 90%, 92% effective. Other than that is Johnson & Johnson, which is available in single dose. But here in Pakistan, we are uh, using uh, Sinopharm, Sinovac, and there is one dosage, um, Chinese vaccine is available. I don't remember the name of that vaccine. Plus, Sputnik is also available uh, by paying some amount of money and we can get this vaccine from private hospitals. Uh, on government, in government sector, only Sinopharm uh, was available and I was also vaccinated with Sinopharm and they are giving at the interval of 21 days. Uh, they have got different intervals of uh, like from 21 to 28 days in between they are given, okay? Uh, but the, they were not taken or they were not bought because of their uh, temperature requirement. You see, minus 20, minus 70. Well, the AstraZeneca, it doesn't need any, like it needs only regular regular fridge temperature, while they require minus 70 degrees, which is uh, like harder in countries like ours, which is underdeveloped, we can't get these vaccines. So how these vaccines work? They work through viral vector, RNA, whole virus or protein subunit. What is viral vector? Uses a harmless virus, which is altered to contain part of COVID-19. Like influenza virus is used and uh, uh, some part of the coronavirus is put into it and then injected to uh, trigger the immune response or antibody formation. Okay, and the RNA nuclear RNA based vaccines they uh, code our cells to make the COVID nineteen spike protein, which is which triggers an immune response. Whole virus and protein units they also trigger the immune response that is the antibody formation. So, so at the end of the day, we require the formation of antibody against the spike protein. So please uh, uh, take the picture of this uh, references, so which were used in making this lecture. I hope you have found it uh, interesting about the medical microbiology. It is edition 15, uh, chapter 35. Just let me confirm it. Let me confirm it and I'll tell you. Chapter 38, page number 306 and 307. Okay. So any questions, if you have, please. Any question? I'm out of my time. Somebody is telling me, thank you, can sign a vaccine. Okay. Brazilian strains reported which are not vaccine effective. So what about that? Okay, madam, can we type? Surgical mask is the best. And until and unless if you are using, Moise is asking, okay. Uh, uh, so surgical mask is the best. If uh, you think that is not enough, you can use double mask, like I'm using double mask. But if you are working in a uh, like board, you have posting in it. So please then use N95 mask and gloves all the time when you are handling the patients. Okay, how long do you think the outbreak is good? Nobody can tell. God knows only. I'm sorry, I can't tell uh, how it's going to end. It, it's in our hands. I would like to say that it is in our hands. We have to wash our hands and keep distance. Keep yourself safe. Okay, I'm signing out. Thank you. Thank you. And it was nice meeting you, though I can't see your faces. Okay, bye.